You know I'm a fan of these electronic dummy loads, especially these uh, cheap ones that we can get from the usual three, eBay, AliExpress or Banggood. So today I'm uh, adding a new member to the family. This is the 150 watts uh, electronic dummy load. The main specs of this uh, unit are of course the 150 watts uh, rating, 10 amps maximum, 60 volts uh, DC maximum, 12 volts uh, DC power input for the onboard electronics, 16 by 2 character LCD and it's advertised as a high precision electronic load. It's uh, supposed to be using 18-bit ADCs and the measurement specs are plus or minus 0.1% uh, um, full scale for the voltage reading and plus or minus 0.2% full scale for the current reading. As you can see it has a built-in fan and heatsink and uh, supposedly its speed uh, is variable according to the temperature but we'll see about that later. I can see they have used this uh, motherboard uh, CPU style bracket for mounting the heatsink and uh, that's nice using off the shelf parts uh, helps keep the cost low. Unfortunately there is no uh, PC connectivity, no data logging capability with uh, this load. The uh, variable potentiometer we see here is for adjusting the LCD contrast but mine was uh, adjusted ok so I didn't need to change that setting. The user interface isn't very intuitive, at first sight I wasn't able to easily make it do something but after a bit of reading I have figured out how to operate the load. Having all the uh, button info in Chinese didn't help either but I was able to figure out those as well. So I will post in the video description below this uh, short user manual that I put together based on the uh, Chinglish info available on the internet. You need to start by applying a 12 volts DC via this uh, 2.1 millimeter jack. It's the usual center positive DC jack, but be careful because it cannot be powered from the load. It needs to be a separate power supply. The load is capable and should be used in a four wire measurement mode to eliminate measurement errors. If however you want to use it in two wire mode, you will need to bridge these uh, terminals for correct operation like in the picture I'm showing uh, on screen right now. The fan will start uh, at 45 degrees Celsius and will stop at 40 degrees Celsius and it's just uh, on off control not variable speed. If the heatsink reaches 87 degrees Celsius it will start to reduce the power and when the heatsink reaches 91 degrees Celsius it will cut off with an over temperature error. During my tests I noticed a different behavior. There is no power reduction when the temperature goes over 87 degrees Celsius, only a cutoff which occurs when the temperature goes over 91 degrees Celsius. But it's nice the fan keeps on working until the unit has cooled and stops at 40 degrees Celsius. On the lower left corner the display will automatically toggle every 2 seconds between power, capacity in amp hours, temperature and time. But it can be locked on a certain view by press and holding the set button and then after the beep pressing the plus button. You can go back to this automatic toggling of the values uh, with the uh, set button the same way holding the set button and after the beep pressing the minus button. Successive presses of the uh, plus button while locking the screen will uh, allow you to switch between uh, the different readings that can be displayed. The uh, power rating in watts is just the calculated power from the set current and the set voltage on the load. It does not update live, it's not a real measurement of the actual power the load is dissipating. That's disappointing because it's a useless number shown on screen. And uh, the measured values like uh, capacity and time will keep accumulating unless you reset them manually by uh, long pressing the start button. 
So first I wanted to do a maximum load test just to make sure this thing is really capable of dissipating 150 watts because that figure seems a bit overstated for the size of the heatsink and the cooling fan. I mean these CPU heatsinks are usually good for CPUs with a power rating of what maybe 90 watts. So applying 25 volts and 5 amps from my bench power supply that is uh, 125 watts so less than the maximum rated power made the load go into thermal overload quite fast less than a minute something like 30 seconds during the test i also noticed the voltage and current measurements on the load especially the current measurement was uh, way off so i placed my fluke 87 in series with the load just to check the actual current and the second multimeter to measure the voltage then I ran my second test, this time I wanted to test for 100 watts, so I applied 20 volts 5 amps from my bench power supply measured with the multimeters and this time with an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius, the dummy load stabilized around 88 degrees Celsius which is quite close to the 91 degrees Celsius where it will go into thermal protection. Now considering these measurements we can say the load is only capable of dissipating 100 watts maximum at an ambient temperature of 25 degrees Celsius. During the test we can also observe the load is showing about 500 millivolts and 500 milliamps measurement error and these measure values are also used for the capacity value showed on screen so that will also have an error. Nothing close to the uh, claimed 0.2% accuracy from the specs of the unit. During the test I also noticed uh, a strange behavior, maybe some firmer bugs. Sometimes the load would freeze, pulling uh, 5 amps continuously and that's possibly the maximum current that my power supply was capable and uh, it had this weird switching visible even on my power supply which was hitting the uh, current limit and was going into constant current mode. The LCD on the load was showing error, none of the buttons responded and the fan was stuck continuously on. The only solution was to remove and reapply power. I find this kind of bugs very disturbing, these are the kind of bugs that could set things on fire. So after seeing this I can strongly advise against getting this dummy load. Unless, I don't know, you get a different firmware revision which has fixed these issues. Now let's also do a teardown of this dummy load to take a closer look at the uh, components used in this circuit. It looks like uh, I have to remove the LCD panel and the heat sink and then all will be visible. It's nice that the LCD panel is um, socketed instead of being uh, directly soldered so we can easily disassemble this. Okay so the LCD panel comes off nicely just an off-the-shelf uh, 1602 module. Now let's try to remove the heat sink. Should be just a matter of unscrewing these four. Okay, so this is our heat sink. So the first thing that strikes me is the length of the shunt resistor. As you can see it's a very long shunt resistor. It looks like they're just using a uh, long piece of uh, copper wire for this. I like how they uh, sandwich the MOSFET between the um, PCB and the heatsink to get as much power dissipation as possible and uh, you can see that the PCB is filled with copper so it will dissipate uh, some heat and uh, you can see the, there are a couple of uh, pads labeled NTC right here and those align right with this uh, hole on the uh, MOSFET package so I think they've placed the small thermistor for measuring the temperature right in the mounting hole of the MOSFET package that's a really nice idea yeah, I think we can see the small leads of the thermistor going right in the uh, hole of the package. It looks like we have a uh, fuse here for protection and a diode maybe for reverse polarity uh, protection. 
let's see if we can uh, read the rating on this uh, fuse I think that's a 10 amp fuse this is not ideal because um, if you accidentally burn this fuse it will be rather difficult to replace I prefer a socketed fuse for easy replacement if you really cannot afford placing a resettable poly fuse and on this side we have the uh, control electronics and uh, I was kind of expecting a um, ST microcontroller either an STM8 or an STM32 but it looks like they went for the cheap option an STC microcontroller so I paused and uh, checked the data sheets for the chips on here on the right side we have an LM358 and uh, uh, an LM393 uh, this is a dual op amp this is a dual comparator so it's probably following the uh, classical uh, dummy load um, schematic which uses uh, uh, an op amp and a comparator and the same one that was used in my uh, electronic uh, DC load build uh, the microcontroller is an uh, STC microcontroller 8051 um, architecture type but it's supposed to be um, much faster built uh, with a, some, some new technology from STC and this microcontroller has a built-in 10-bit ADC but as the specs for this unit uh, tell us it should be uh, an 18-bit ADC I believe this, uh, these two chips might be the ADCs one for the voltage, one for the current and uh, I've tried uh, searching this uh, code from the chips it's a CA6S I wasn't able to identify anything but I know microchip has some 18-bit ADCs in a SOT23.6 uh, package and since both of these have the same market marking on them I don't think there is another function they could accomplish on this board other than uh, being some external 18-bit ADCs and the ADCs from uh, microchip Coincidentally or not, they also their marking also starts with uh, CA, and then there is some uh, random number I believe for identification. So these could be those ADCs from um, microchip 18 bit, and uh, the uh, huge errors that we were seeing during our tests, uh, I think could only be uh, caused by um, wrong calibration values. I'm not sure if there is a calibration menu for this uh, dummy load but uh, if there was such a calibration menu uh, I believe it could make the dummy load usable uh, except for that uh, nasty firmer bug, bug that I found earlier. So I managed to put everything uh, back together and now I shall give you my final thoughts on this uh, dummy load. Don't buy it, it's just not worth the money, it's a piece of junk the 60 watt dummy load still remains the best dummy load in this uh, 20 to 25 dollars uh, price range this 150 watt dummy load first of all is not capable of dissipating 150 watts as shown in my tests it can only do maximum 100 watts the measurement errors are high and there are bugs in firmware that could easily allow this thing to catch fire the only good thing about this load is the LCD display which is better than a 7 segment display and I kind of like the uh, form factor and the fact that it uses this uh, CPU cooler but other than that there is nothing good about it so there you have it I review these electronic items so that everyone else doesn't waste their money buying useless stuff thank you for watching this video and as usual let me know what you think in the comment section below and hitting the like button certainly helps, don't forget about that. Thank you and see you next time.